If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. Since this channel, like many others in the black media, is under a shadow ban, be sure to give the video a like, as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. Now, that said... Okay, it has been one complete week since Jim Crow Joe was sworn in as the 46th President of the United States. One full week that we've gotten a taste of what things are going to be like under the hand of Jim Crow Joe. One full week where we got to see what were going to be the priorities for Joe Biden's presidency and the first Asian American vice president. One week. Yeah, you can get a lot done in a week, even as president, because, you know, Barack Obama was telling black folks, well, well you, you, as president, you know, you, you get in there and you find out that uh, you really can't really do much of anything. Yeah, when he's sitting in front of black folks, that's what he says. But Jim Crow Joe didn't seem to have much problem doing anything at all, just like with President Trump. See, when it comes to everybody except for black people, they got all the power in the world. Now, when you take a look at what it is, all the executive orders that Joe Biden has signed his first seven days in office, you see a very distinct pattern that takes shape. Now, of course, you get the usual no-nothing unimportant executive orders, stuff about the Keystone XL pipeline. You also get memorandums regarding regulatory review. You have America joining the Paris Climate Accord, you know, these are basically um, things that are boutique issues for boutique groups. We ain't concerned about that. This is black empowerment that we represent because everybody else is sticking up for their issues and their issues alone. Hence, we will stick up for our issues and our issues alone, just like everybody else does. So what has Joe Biden done in his first week as chief executive of the United States? What's he done for black people, particularly those of us who are descended from America's slaves? What, what has he done for us? Well, not a damn thing. Oh, there's been plenty of stuff that he's been doing for particular groups. Just nothing for us. Why, he signed seven executive orders regarding immigrants. One regarding a proclamation to end the ban on U.S. entry for majority Muslim read Arab countries. Executive order revising immigration enforcement policies. Incorporating undocumented immigrants, I think you mean illegal aliens, into the census. A memorandum reinstating deferred enforced departure for Liberians. That's because, you know, we need more black immigrants in here because we don't have enough homegrown black folks. We need more black immigrants. Strengthening DACA. Because we all know that Joe Biden got into the White House because of the Latino vote. The black vote had nothing to do with getting into the White House, right? And, of course, an executive order reaffirming commitment to tribal sovereignty because we got to take care of the Native Americans. After all, they were key to getting him into the White House. I mean, it's not like black people did anything to get him in the White House or anything. And an executive order denouncing anti-Asian discrimination and xenophobia. So, out of his seven points that he lists, nothing having to do with us. If you're a black person whose bloodline goes back to the killing fields of the American South, far as Joe Biden's concerned, you don't exist. Now, there were two executive orders dealing with LGBTQ whatever. One that bans discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation, which is completely and thoroughly redundant. All of the workplace rules do not allow you to discriminate on the basis of, of sexual orientation. As far as gender identity goes, this is just gilding the lily. This is just basically a victory lap. And this is basically saying, hey, you know, we're going to pat you on the back because you identify as fill in the blank. That's what this is about. But that happens to be a large part of what their support requires. It requires that basically we want to make sure that what somebody does in the bedroom or how somebody identifies themselves in regards to their gender or sexual orientation must be cause for celebration. We require that. That is mandatory. That must be done. We require that you do so. 
Biden also signed an executive order reversing Trump's military ban on transgenders. Again, these are not things that actually challenge white supremacy. Nothing on here challenges white supremacy. And that's the entire point. If anything, everything on here reinforces white supremacy. White supremacy is not merely those classified as white. It also relies on a large number of those who white supremacy has assigned a place under it to stay in that place. It's got to get you to collaborate with white supremacy. And that's what this is all meant to do. Oh, there's going to be a couple of little crumbs that get flicked your way just so long as you don't challenge the racial pecking order, the racial pyramid scheme of the United States. And that's what they did here. Go, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the country allows in a lot of people who come from countries with cultures that are hideously racist toward black people, people who come from cultures that are just reprehensibly anti-black. Yeah, we're going to bring as many of them in as possible. And then we get to play the word game that, oh, these are <laughs> people of color. Yeah, people of color who they themselves call themselves white on their driver's licenses and on their job applications and on any other sort of form that they fill out. They identify themselves as white, but the dominant society says, oh, no, 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 these are people of color. And they get to play a game with each other, which is, hey, you play your cards right. You're going to be on the team. Wink and a nudge. See, nobody ever talks about the anti-black racism from these countries, especially those south of the border. Nobody talks about that. Nobody makes that into an issue. And that's part of the game, which is, hey, you're going to be given de facto immunity from criticism. You know, just like nobody ever talks about white on white crime because we don't criticize members of the dominant society. We don't do that. There's just crime. It's never a white on white crime. It's never, what about broken white families? It's just white. It's just families, never white. And see, we don't take anything negative and racially pathologize it when it comes to white people. We don't racially pathologize anything regarding them. That's only for black people who get treated like that. So uh, we're letting you get away with calling yourselves white, though we don't believe that you are. And hey, our solicitude could be expanded to other avenues if you show that you're going to be good little cogs in this white supremacist machine. Don't upset the apple cart and there'll be something in it for you. This is what Joe Biden's making very clear. There's not going to be a damn thing for black people. Black people put Joe Biden in the White House. You go on my Twitter page back on the 21st, I posted an excerpt from an MSNBC piece where you had a political analyst pointing out that the Joe Biden's base was black people. And, you know, so you had some white suburban folks out there, but that the Hispanics were not in any way instrumental in getting Joe Biden the presidency because it was black folks in Georgia who did that. Hispanics do not have any significant numbers. And he was absolutely right. In fact, Hispanics broke for Trump. Look at Florida. So black folks single handedly put Joe Biden in the White House. And what does Joe Biden do? He turns around and says, we need to have more Arabs. We need to have more black immigrants from abroad, especially those who we've already had. We've already vetted them and made sure that they're on the team. They're going to be kissing our feet extra sweet. We need to bring in people from south of the border. We need to be catering to uh, to Indians and we need to be catering to Asian Americans. We need to be catering to Native American tribes and such. Well, what about black people, the ones who put you in the White House? Well, uh, what about y'all? Oh, yeah, all them dumb Negroes who were talking about how Joe Biden was going to get in there and do right this time because he'd be scared of what happened if he didn't. He doesn't seem very scared, now does he? You have got to be seven candy coated flavors of stupid to have gone for this. We told you that if you did not punish Joe Biden, what was going to happen was as soon as he took office, he would immediately begin a hyper aggressive drive to promote everyone else's interests and to make sure that he makes a show out of I don't give a damn what black people want. And the reason why happens to be both the political left and the political right are on the same page where black people are concerned. We have shown them that we're getting them more and more of us are getting serious about our interests. We've also shown that we're willing to make some noise and we're willing to upset the apple cart. And that being the case, the bad guys have closed ranks here. There is a foot race going on to make sure that black people are politically and demographically neutralized. That's where this hyper obsession with immigration on their part comes from.
Not only do they need to make sure that black people are deluged in as many non-blacks as possible so they can have a they can expand the category of people of color, but do it in a way that makes it where black people's interests can be politically shunted aside, where they they have political cover to say why we're not ignoring black people. We're it's democracy. We're doing the greatest good for the greatest number of non-whites. And well, you see, black people's numbers are smaller than they've ever been, so they're just not that important. Why? There's other there's other people of color, you know, it's not just black people alone, you see. That's what they're doing. They're starting the steady drumbeat of that. And this is not a matter of, oh, well, we got to see about their interest and black people too, or, well, we can see about black people's interests, but there are other people to consider as well. Instead, it's just, we're considering everybody else and black people, you got to learn how to work with these other people. They never tell anybody else that they got to learn to work with us. So all you idiots who are sitting there, Talking about that Joe Biden was going to do right by black people. You have no clue what you were talking about. You're idiots. Nobody should ever listen to you. And you're the reason why all of this crap is coming down. So we're going to make sure that although you bastards are in hiding right now, the morons who are cheerleading for Biden and Kamala, you can't find them now. They're in hiding. The online morons, many of them bots and white people with sock puppet accounts to be sure. But you also had a lot of dumb Negroes in there, too. A lot of them called in and identified themselves. Well, you morons wonder how long it's going to be before you admit that you were wrong. Oh, that's right. You're not going to admit you were wrong because you're not honest to begin with. See, Joe Biden understands the part that he plays under white supremacy. It is precisely whatever the group of controlled opposition is, their job is the ones to actually plunge the knife into the backs of whatever, whatever group in the society they're supposed to be controlling. That's how controlled opposition works. You got the one side who speaks for whatever the dominant society's interests are, and you got the other side who's supposed to keep whatever ethnic, min religious, or sectarian minorities there are, keep them thinking that, oh, you have a voice in the government too, so there's no need for you to get turned up because there's individuals in the government who will pretend that they're speaking for you. There's no need for you to do anything or field candidates of your own or to reject the system altogether because after all, we have assigned to you your representatives. The system has assigned you your representatives, so you just got to work with them. Don't cause no trouble now. You just work with them. That's how controlled opposition works. And you see how effective it's been. You got black folks who've been sitting here thinking that the very white supremacists who have been oppressing us are going to put someone on the ballot that they themselves will put someone on the ballot who's going to undermine their power. Yep, Joe Biden's first week on the job. And it turned out exactly as we told you. And by the way, it ain't going to get no better from here. This is Joe Biden's report card. And what we see is straight F's. But the dunce cap goes to the idiots who supported him. See, this is what happens when you decide that you're going to fight against the interests of the black collective. When you decide that you're going to do what the white media tells you to do. Now, a lot of you cowards out there who thought it was cute to cheerlead for Cop Mala and Jim Crow Joe, you did it because of the fact that you're too lazy and you're too ignorant and you're too apathetic to do the work that protecting yourself from white supremacy would require. Because you don't want to do that, or you're too scared to do it, or you got better things to do than to ensure your survival. What you did instead was you decided you would try to farm it out yet again. This strategy hasn't worked in 150 years, but you're going to keep doing it anyway because, hey, nothing's more intelligent than doing the same damn failed strategy over and over again, praying for a different result. I mean, that's just the height of genius. So you're thinking to yourself that you're going to outsource your protection and your security and your defense to somebody else, especially the guy who wrote the 94 crime bill. Because, I mean, if you can't trust the guy who authored three strikes, if you can't trust the guy who co-sponsored the 86 Anti-Drug Abuse Act, you know, the law that created the 100 to 1 sentencing disparity between crack cocaine and powder cocaine. I mean, if you can't trust that guy, who can you trust? It sounds asinine and just moronic beyond all words when you sit there and say it, but this is exactly what a lot of black people did. They thought it was cute to go for this because the truth of the matter is they're too stupid and or scared or unprincipled to actually want to fight white supremacy. And that's what Donald Trump represented to them. What Donald Trump represented to them was white supremacy in your face. Now, what you're going to do about it? It's time to prove if you're going to fight white supremacy or not. 
And that being the case, a lot of black folks are like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to fight white. So I'm, I'm, I was just scared. I was just scared. I was just scared. And that's what they're scared of. That's what it really was. You see, those of us who are about black empowerment, we are not scared of the white supremacists because we are aware of them. We understand that white supremacy is not going to just quietly slink off somewhere. White supremacy will have to be faced down and defeated. We want everyone to lay their cards on the table so we know who the hell the actual extremists are, so we know who the world they are. We got a list. We know who the enemies are when they out themselves. We want them to because it ain't going to go any other way. Jim Crow Joe is not going to defeat white supremacy for you. Hell, he's one of the white supremacists. The purpose that the reactionary wing of any political establishment serves is to maintain solidarity among the in crowd. Whoever the in crowd is, the, the group who's supposed to be the folks who the society actually works in the interest of, the reactionary's job is to maintain solidarity among that group. Make sure the in crowd stays unified. But of course, if you have an in crowd, there must be an out crowd. So what you have is controlled opposition. Their job is to make sure that the dissidents, the people who are marginalized, the ones left out, the ones who the society thinks it's okay to attack. Well, you don't want those people causing any trouble. So you need to have them fooled into thinking that they've got representation too. It's not going to do anything, but you have a voice. Granted, there's no action that ever comes behind that voice, but you got a voice. And that's where the controlled opposition comes in. They'll be the ones who talk this phony populist pap. And they'll be pretending as if they have sympathy for the out group. Oh, we want to make sure that everyone is included. Meanwhile, when it comes time to actually do something that will change things, well, we're going to be doing for everybody except for you. Joe Biden made a ton of phony promises on the campaign trail. It was blatantly obvious that he had no intention of doing anything for black people because he didn't promise us a damn thing. See, a lot of black folks think it's okay whenever they talk about Donald Trump supporters and you ask the, those empty-headed maggots what it was that Donald Trump was actually going to do. Do you actually think that Donald Trump's going to do any of the stuff that he says? And they were like, well, no, but we like what he says. You laugh about that. But then it comes time to talk about Joe Biden's record. Why would black people, the black folks who called themselves cheerleading for him and making excuses for him? First question is, has Joe Biden ever admitted to what he's done against black people? Uh, no. Has Joe Biden even decided, OK, I won't admit to what I've done, but I am going to make sure they understand I'm going to undo all of this stuff. Just don't put my name with it. I, I won't take responsibility or blame for it, but I will undo the damage that I did, the policies I put in place. Just don't, just don't, just don't put my name to it. Did he do that? No. Well, do you believe he's going to do anything for black people? Well, uh, I, I think so's. Well, what did he say he's going to do for black people? Well, uh, reparations, you know, we, we've been talking about reparations. Yeah, we've been talking about it. He hasn't. Well, I'm sorry. He did say something about reparations. He said he's not in favor of it. Well, uh, 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 defund the police. We've been talking about defund the police. Well, Biden did say something about defunding the police. He said he's against it. He says he's going to give the cops more money, not less. When a man rides to power on the backs of the very people that he has spent his entire adult life attacking, that says a lot about that group of people. And it says nothing good. I mean, you have these empty-headed goofballs. They didn't even have the freaking sense that God gave a dog to at least demand something of Jim Crow Joe. If you're not going to be holding him to account for all the damnable things he's done against us, the least you can do is actually you got some common sense and say, well, we're going to ignore all the black folks languishing and rotting in prison because of you. We're going to ignore the communities destroyed because of the laws you put on the books. We're going to ignore the demonization and denigration of black folks that you've been the tip of the spear for. And instead, we're going to make some demands about our tangibles. We'll ignore all that other stuff. But if you want our vote, you got to come through with these tangibles. Didn't demand anything at all. What did they demand of Kamala Harris? Nothing at all. And now you're sitting here, a lot of you trying to hide, you're going to all of a sudden be, I mean, like we explained to you, you better believe that some of the most outspoken people who are going to be criticizing Biden the most, people who you haven't been hearing of, people who you never saw before now, over the next couple of years, if not the next few months, are going to be the same people who up until now had been 
openly or at least overtly supporting Biden and Harris. A lot of these fools who are out here singing their praises and trying to support them and trying to low key or just in your face, give them support. These are going to be the people who, when it becomes blatantly obvious how stupid they were and everybody, when it becomes just undeniable that this was yet another trick bag that any fool should have been smarter than to fall for, they're going to be the ones sitting there talking the most. They, you better believe some of these people are going to be trying to hopefully think to themselves that they'll make us forget if they just get out there and say, oh, that Jim Crow Joe, man, I knew he wasn't fool. I see I was on to him from the beginning. He didn't have me, fools. That's what a lot. You're going to have a lot of idiots doing that. And the white media has been right in there with them, with this total erasure of black people from the political discourse that they're attempting to get underway. They've decided that they just won't mention black people when it comes to the agenda setting media. You know, the three big networks and the cable networks and the New York Times and the Washington Post, the agenda setting media. Black women have been patting themselves on the back saying more black women have been elected to political office this cycle than ever before. Yeah, but you notice how you haven't seen the white media mentioning that? No celebration of that. Where are the white feminists at to celebrate the breaking of the glass ceiling with Kamala Harris, the first Asian American vice president? Huh? Nah, as far as they're concerned, they're not going to be doing any of that mess. See, they were saying stuff about black people, especially black women, right on the night of the, right up until the inauguration. From election night, right up until that decrepit, wrinkled old racist croaked out, so help me God. Up until then, they've been mentioning black people, at least in passing. But after he said that, okay, we ain't mentioning black people anymore. As far as they're concerned, black people are a non-entity. It's time to change the freaking subject now. And we told you that would happen. They would sit there until once Joe Biden got himself, once he took that oath of office, that's it. Now it's time to begin the pivot. See, they had you thinking, oh, black people, we got some clout. They's mentioning us. We told you it was just a con game that they're running. They want is some psychological masturbation because they knew that if they didn't mention black folks at least a few times, then black people would immediately begin saying, OK, we knew we fell for it. It's a matter of as soon as the inauguration comes up, they bring in some Maya Angelou wannabe. By the way, that uh, young lady who called herself basically giving a very long winded poetic pass to the racism of the dominant society. This Amanda Gorman woman who had on that canary yellow winter coat. By the way, what the hell is about these freaking bootlicks in the color yellow? Big Bird, that clown from In Cobra, he was wearing one. Amanda Gorman's wearing one. Well, it makes sense that they would wear yellow. That's definitely their color, all right? Yellow definitely suits them. It goes perfectly with their temperament, character, and courage. But Amanda Gorman... That's about your little wannabe discount Maya Angelou. As far as they were concerned, you go ahead. This is going to be it. And after this, we ain't mentioning you anymore. See, it is not harmless when you play along with the white media's games because they have a script already written. And that script ends with you defeated, if not dead. Oh, but press the truth. You just want us to vote for Trump. Dumbass, did I ever say to vote for Trump? I told you don't vote for a damn person. Nobody. If Trump had been reelected, that would have been a shock to the system because over the last four years, Donald Trump has really not done anything of any note of any significance against black people other than run his mouth. But it's precisely because of the fact that you could not ignore Donald Trump's racism that a lot of y'all object to because you're scared. Now, if you're scared, just say you're scared. But that's the problem. A lot of black folks have a small problem being honest about their actual situation and condition. When they're scared, they don't want to have to say it. What you're scared of is now the white supremacy is in your face. You're going to have to do something about it. No, no, I ain't fighting white supremacies now. Oh, uh, them Democrats, they're going to do something about it, right? Who do you think Donald Trump was giving money to before he decided to run for the White House, stupid? He bragged about how he would gave campaign donations to Hillary Clinton. See, the bad guys understand exactly what the deal is. It's black people who are in denial. And when Donald Trump was in front of you, you had a true-to-the-game racist, and it was a matter of people were putting their cards on the table. And you had to admit to how bad the reality was. You could not ignore it. You couldn't deny it. 
but you also couldn't deny that you were completely and thoroughly unprepared for it. And that's what terrified you. You were actually going to have to put down whatever video game controller you had. You're going to have to put down the weed. You're going to have to put down the remote control to the TV and you're going to have to focus on something else. And black folks want to stay perpetual children. We want to stay perpetual adolescents. We're determined that we're not going to take on any of the trappings of adulthood and we're damn sure not going to do anything about this power situation. It was not Donald Trump that you feared. What you were afraid of was that a lot of you were going to have to grow the hell up. Survival requires adult responses to the threats and challenges of the real world. And you didn't want to face those challenges. Donald Trump showed you what the reality is. and you, A lot of black folks preferred a pleasant lie to the horrifying truth. Donald Trump could be defeated by black people, but he could not be defeated by black people who have better things to do with their time than fight white supremacy. You see, with Donald Trump in the White House, anything that would be done, any plans to try to attack black people would immediately be identified as, ah, this is rank white supremacy. But now you got Jim Crow Joe in there and his professed half-black, half-Asian vice president, who herself was the tip of the spear of attacking black people in California during her tyrannical reign as DA of San Francisco and later Attorney General of California. And now when they attack black people, it's going to be covered up and is going to be sympathized with. And, oh, these are some these are the unintended consequences that we're going to put together a committee and our sympathy. What happened was was certainly it was certainly something needs to be looked at is going to be the Obama script all over again. Very disturbing, very disturbing. We're going to look into this, by the way. And then they go and do it five more times the next day. But unlike with Trump in the White House, no one's going to be saying that what Joe Biden does against black people are actually attacks by the White House on black people. Nobody's going to be holding him to any sort of account or criticism for the things he says or the things he doesn't say. See, with Trump in the White House, when stuff was going down, people would point and go, well, you know, it's the tone and tenor that comes out of the White House. It is the tone set by Donald Trump. That's what they said when he was in there. Things were attributable to the very people who write policy, and they didn't have anywhere to hide, and they were getting put on the spot. With Joe Biden in there now, he's going to sit there and hide behind Kamala Harris, and she will gladly let him. And all the rest of the Democrats are going to say, why? You can't accuse us of targeting black people. Why? Look at our half-black vice president over here. And Kamala Harris, fulfilling her role as a crash dummy for these clowns, she'll do just like Obama did, cut and paste the exact same script, I want you to know that I have lived in the black community and when black people would come to me and they would know they could depend on me, especially when I was locking them up. And um, black folks, I I wouldn't allow anything underhanded to go. If I vouch for Joe Biden, that means he's on the level. And of course, you'll have a few of her bootlick sorority pals out there going, "Uh uh-huh, you show right. And that's the way that this is going to go. This is meant to muddy the waters. See, I'm not scared of a, of a blatant, open, honest white supremacist in the White House. They've all been white supremacists, even Barack Obama. He was one of the worst. Just because you're not Caucasian does not mean you're not a white supremacist. Some of the worst white supremacists on the planet have been non-whites. A white supremacist is anyone who fights to promote or protect the interest of white supremacy. And white supremacy is defined by anti-black racism. That's what defines that system, because that's what it's based upon. That's that is its foundation. Now, Joe Biden is in there making sure that everybody else gets the message loudly and clearly. He is the president for immigrants, the president for Hispanics and Asians and Native Americans, and he ain't doing a damn thing for black people. And everybody can see that. These other groups, they happen to be on the same frequency. They understand full well that part of their position happens to be upholding the racial pyramid and keeping its order exactly the way the white supremacy has placed it. Because after all, if you don't, well, a lot of y'all who have been playing this game of, oh, I've pulled myself up by my bush. Well, you know, my grandfather came here from such and such a country. And if we did better, why, we're doing better than you Negroes. Yeah, you, ain't, you haven't heard the Asians saying that for the last year. Now, have you? Haven't heard the Hispanics talking that guff for the last year either. Now, have you? Yeah, when it comes down to it, when white supremacy actually decides to put the screws to some people, then all of a sudden you find these 
Asians and Hispanics and such, they drop all of that bootstrap stuff. They all of a sudden, we're all in this together. You know, oh, white supremacy is a problem. Uh, yeah, it's a problem now, isn't it? But don't think for a moment that white supremacy has not already calculated that there's going to be a blacklash. That there is going to be black people who look and say, yeah, we knew that bastard Biden and his duplicitous little co-conspirator Kamala. We knew that these scumbags, that they were up to no good. We knew that they didn't mean a damn thing that they said. They know the black lash is coming because the black media is going to make sure that we keep score of all the stuff that they don't do. We're going to keep a running tally of how many days that they haven't done a damn thing for black people. They know it's coming. So that being the case, they've already planned that there's going to be some phony baloney press conferences. There's going to be some absolutely empty PR stunts where Biden or Kamala, usually probably Kamala, will stand in front of the lectern with the seal of the president and say, we the, we're very concerned about people of color and disadvantaged communities and Latinos and Asians and Native Americans and immigrants and LGBTs and black people and transgenders and women and people of all stripes who have been denied their fair share of their blah, 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 blah. And that's what they're going to do and pretend as if, well, see, we mentioned black people in passing. So that, you know, there, there, there. See, you, you've been mentioned. You've been mentioned. Why? They had a groundbreaking speech. The white media would be sitting there pretending as if it was the second coming, as if it was the Gettysburg Address. Oh, they gave a groundbreaking speech. This is truly progress. You're going to have Van Jones. I don't know if he'll be crying or not, but you'll have Van Jones and Donna Brazil and Jonathan Capehart will come out from whatever desk he's been under. And they will all be saying that, oh, the, Joe Biden's fulfilling his promises. He's fulfilling his promises. Now you take a look at what this bastard's done the last week. He ain't done a damn thing for black folks, ain't even mentioned black people. But what'll happen is whenever he gets around to whatever phony baloney PR stunt that he's going to try, where they'll pretend as if, oh, we've got a policy, we're doing something about black, they're going to have them out there. The white media will have their black bootlicks sitting there saying, oh, he's fulfilling his promises. He's coming through. His this is coming. This is going to be coming and it's going to be a big nothing burger, but they're going to pretend as if this is just the biggest thing that's ever happened. Oh, this is this is the greatest, biggest thing since since the Civil Rights Act of 64 and 65. Oh, this is just the biggest, the most significant, important legislation. Well, what legislation? He, Joe Biden has impaneled a blue ribbon commission who will look into racial inequities when it comes to certain small categories of black folks on the outer pits of Cincinnati in 1985 under a blue moon of the fourth Sunday of the third week of the 10th year. That's what they're going to do. It's coming and they're going to, that's what the con is going to be. And you know what? You're going to have some black folks dumb enough to actually think that there's something to it. Why? I decided to do a little Google search to see whatever happened to that lift every voice plan that Joe Biden was talking about. Whatever happened to Lift Every Voice? Anybody um, heard anything about that the last week? Because I sure haven't. Well, there was something relating to Lift Every Voice that I did find. Old nigga Jim Clyburn, he decided that he would slither out of his hole. And he's proposing making Lift Every Voice and sing a national hymn. Not the national hymn. No, we ain't going to make that the national anthem. We should make it a national hymn. And it would be an act of bringing the country together. Really? A freaking song? And he actually had the nerve to write, Everybody can identify with that song. Really? Do you think Richard Spencer can identify with Lift Every Voice and Sing? Do you think that Matthew Heimbach and the other trash with the Alt Reich can identify with Lift Every Voice and Sing? Do you think Donald Trump can identify with Lift Every Voice and Sing? Do you think that any of the racist and white supremacists who stormed the Capitol can identify with that? You didn't see them standing around holding hands singing We Shall Overcome. Oh no, their strategy was not We Shall Overcome, theirs was We Shall Overrun. But for those of you who are wondering, whatever happened to Lift Every Voice, this is about the most that's been said about it. Biden ain't said a damn word about it in the last week. And of course, Kamala the cop, she hasn't said anything about it either. 
And here Negro Jim Clyburn is. You would think that he would be saying, um, um, so can't wait to, um, get some movement on that lift of every voice sham, I mean, um, plan that Joe Biden was talking about. I, I sure can't help, I sure hope that they'll, they'll put me or some of my flunkies, I mean, um, some of my loyal assistants, very conscientious public servants that I've had under my thumb, I mean, um, in my pocket, I mean, um, at my side for the last 30 years. I'm hoping that Joe Biden will give them some cushy government positions so they can get the dollar up, I mean, so that they can um, do the good work for the people of America, and uh, we can have a blue ribbon committee to discuss whether or not Lift Every Voice and Sing should be a national hymn. Not, nothing like that at all. Nothing about Lift Every Voice as a plan. Nothing about talking about implementing it. Absolutely no pressure brought to bear, but then again, it, wouldn't, it would be for nothing anyway, but not even for the sake of appearances. They're not talking about lift every voice and sing at all. You would think that the congressional black talkers would be doing that. But then again, they already the black folks who decide to go along with voting for Joe and Kamala. They've made it very clear. They're not interested in tangibles of any sort. You ain't got to do a dang thing for black folks. See, the idiots who would call up Jason and Tariq and others and say, well, Joe Biden, he ain't got to do nothing long as he ain't Donald Trump. That's the important thing. Get Trump out of there. Yeah. What you just told the establishment is they don't have to do anything for black people. Only thing Joe Biden's got to do is not be Donald Trump. That's all he's got to do. As long as he's not Donald Trump, that's the only thing he actually has to do. So that's all he's going to do. He ain't going to do a damn thing for you. And the congressional black talkers, they're looking and going, well, hell, there's not going to be any pressure put on us. Well, not any, not anything significant because black folks have decided to hit the snooze button. Now, understand something. We're going to start getting squeezed from both sides now. Joe Biden's raft of executive orders that are geared overwhelmingly toward immigrants. And that lets you know that that's what the drive of the Biden administration is. We told you it was going to be this with Kamala Harris in there. What the hell did you think was going to happen? We told you that this was going to be what defines the Biden-Harris administration. They were going to be fast tracking and accelerating what they see as the complete and thorough making irrelevant of black people. That's what it's supposed to be. It's a matter of black people are enemy number one, not the white supremacists who stormed the Capitol. Because the white supremacists who stormed the Capitol, they are the beneficiaries of white supremacy. It's just a matter of we need a political solution to make them calm down. Black people are trying to overturn and bring down the whole damn system. White supremacy is a series of giveaways, goodies, and guarantees handed to those that the system classifies as white. That's the glue that holds white supremacy together. But the thing about a guarantee is you can't be having it where everybody gets the guarantee. You can't have white supremacy that is ubiquitous. White supremacy has to be specific. White supremacy cannot exist in a vacuum. It has to have something or someone, some group that it can look at and say, see, we're better than them. And everybody knows that. So Joe Biden is going to be making it very clear that this push that he's doing, putting all of these policies behind immigration, this is supposed to be the final solution to all these problems that black people have been causing. We're going to be able to subsume them with just a tsunami of non of non black people. And that's the most important thing. They don't have to be white just as long as they're not black. And as long as they are already predisposed to be on the same page as the dominant society, that's why it's important these cultures that they come from have a strong tradition of anti-black racism. And then what happens is, as black people, had, our condition is supposed to get progressively and progressively worse. That's the plan. It subject us to the strangulation. And what they'll say is, well, you know, we're not so sure what's wrong with black people. After all, you know, th their numbers are shrinking, but that's just the natural result of America's diversifying. Yeah, all of these non-black people that we let in, principally from south of the border, well, all these people that we've let in, well, the nation's got a huge influx of immigrants, so it's just natural that black people's numbers would be declining. Well, percentage is one thing. But they're going to be talking about the numbers overall. That's what they're going to be pointing out. Well, you know, we're not really sure what it is. Maybe we need another committee. We should put a committee together to look at it. We can have Kamala Harris chair the committee. So understand that we're going to be having the white supremacists who are who are angry as hell that they think that there's a threat that things might actually change in this country. 
And you're going to have Joe Biden setting up other opposition that's going to be coming at us from the other side, and we will be trapped in the middle. That's what the game plan here is. That's what the goal is. They're not just doing these things for nothing. They're doing it with a specific intention. They're trying to achieve a certain predetermined outcome. And when you see that black people are completely and thoroughly unmentioned, black people are just a complete and thorough non-entity and non-issue, complete a policy has been put together here, being put out there, and black people are left out of the discussion. When black people put Joe Biden in the White House, that send a, sends a message clearer than anything else. This is an act of blatant hostility against us. Blatant. But it couldn't have happened without some black folks backing it. So take a look. Joe Biden's put together what the plan is, the game plan. This is going to be all about getting as many immigrants into America and making sure that they become legalized as quickly as possible as a demographic and political counterweight to black people in this country. That's the plan. That's what the next four years are going to be all about. And there's going to be a lot of paid bootlicks who are going to be cheerleading for it. I pointed out on my Twitter page today, none other than Jonathan putting on his cape heart. He's sitting here with the with a piece that he wrote for the Washington Post, I kid you not, where he actually was celebrate, saying that we should be in awe. His words, we should be in awe of Kamala Harris's mother. He actually had the nerve to write that. We should be in awe of Kamala Harris's mother. His, her mother. We, well, at least we know who to blame for how she turned out, but that's what he wrote. Now, it seems the Washington Post loves giving Jonathan putting on his cape heart a platform so he can spew all sorts of anti-black rhetoric nonsense like this. Last time he was saying black people don't need reparations. They just need an apology. Hmm. Clarence Thomas couldn't have put that any better or worse. But that's what he wrote for the Washington Post. And now it's, we should be in awe of Kamala Harris's mother. What the hell has Kamala Harris's mother done that I should be in awe of? What the hell has she done that I should be standing in awe from? I can think of a lot of stuff that she's done that has been awful. But I can't think of a damn thing that has been awesome. But you know, Cape Hart happens to have a couple of TV gigs. Part time, of course. The white media may see him as a safe Negro, but clearly they can't stand more than a couple of hours of him a week. There, there's no way they could stomach five days a week of him. So they gave him a little bit job, a little piece of a job on PBS on Fridays. And he's got like a little old a little weekend Sunday morning gig on MSNBC. You know, basically they're slotting him the same crumbs that they were given Joy Reid and Obviously, he's hoping that he can audition for a, a more head, more space time, and hopefully he can get some more sweeteners thrown his way, some more crumbs, just like Amanda Gorman. See, when you see the Negroes getting out here, and they're putting all these extras on toe in the line for their white media masters, that's how you know that these clowns are auditioning for a job. That's how you know. That's how you know. When they go overboard like that, their audience is the white media masters who they work for. That's their audience. But judging by the reaction of people on Twitter, especially black folks on Twitter, Capehart's attempt to make a saint out of a sinner didn't go over very well at all. So I need my family to understand that what's going on here, we can be disgusted, but don't you dare try to be surprised. Keep an eye out on the folks who are going to be trying to change their uniform in the next couple of years or even months and pretend as if, oh, I was on to Kamala and Biden from the jump. We told you what was going to happen. This is why you have a black media so you can have foresight. So you can see this crap coming before it gets here and understand something. It's going to be much, much more difficult, though not impossible, for us to push back 
against white supremacy under these circumstances. What's going to make it more difficult, of course, is that whereas before they could not deny the racism coming out of the White House, this time they'll do just, just like with Barack Obama. They'll be go cool, well. We're we're not sure. We don't we don't know what's going on. Um, but but Joe Biden promises us there's going to be a, he's giving sympathy to the black folks getting killed and and don't worry about black people who are being wholesale run out of areas and don't worry about the fact that black people's economic condition hasn't changed. He's going to put together a committee to look into it. That's the game they're going to be playing. Our job is to keep doing what we've been doing. This is going to come down to a fight to see which one of us wants it more. Who decides that they're going to tap out? Who decides that it's just too much of a problem? Who decides that fighting against the other side is just too much work? Who gets worn down? That's what this is about. That's what attrition means. Well, it's not going to be our side. That's for damn sure. Black empowerment is in this one for the long haul. We are bigger than Jim Crow Joe Biden. We are bigger than cop Mala Harris. We are bigger than the fakers, frauds, phonies, fools, sellout suckups, and simps like the Jonathan Caparts and the Joy Reeds and the Jason Johnsons and the rest of the assorted garbage that the white media props up as their black sock puppets meant to excuse and praise the actions of white supremacy. We're bigger than all of them. All we need to do at this case, at this point, is make sure that we do not let up. Now is the time for those of you who have been thinking about whether or not you wanted to start doing your own podcasting, thinking about whether or not now is the time for you to throw your hat in the ring for even things like political office or what have you. This is the time to be doing it because we stand on the cusp of a lot of black folks once the initial white media hype dies down. And our steady drumbeat persists. Black folks are going to be looking at first and going, oh, man, y'all need to give Joe some time. Well, as time goes on and we don't allow people to forget about Joe Biden's lies and the damage that he does, is we make sure that he isn't allowed to just do his dirt and saunter away. We're going to make sure people see it and that people don't forget it. We're going to keep it front of mind. That's our job. And as that happens, the would-be dead-enders, the few dead-enders who were out there still trying to pretend as if there was something beneficial, even potentially beneficial, about Biden and Harris in the White House, those fools are going to soon evaporate and go away. And then it's just going to be left with us beating the drum here. And they don't have an answer for that. They don't have a solution for the truth that the black media keeps bringing. We have invalidated their black bootlicks. Oh yeah, sure, you can have your sock puppets calling themselves praising Kamala Harris, but it's not moving the needle. It's not convincing anyone of anything. You're not persuading anyone. White supremacy did not stop black empowerment at all. The only thing that white supremacy managed to do was to buy itself in comparative terms just a little bit more time. But make no mistake, white supremacy's time is running out. That's what the black grassroots are all about. We are about the end of white supremacy. And white supremacy doesn't have enough executive orders to stop that.